You know, I find it absolutely fascinating that self-proclaimed Christian nationalists like Marjorie Taylor Greene go out of their way to prove how loyal they are to the American fascist movement. She'll even support bans on women's reproductive rights that could directly affect her one day. But still, there are some individuals within her movement that will never accept her. Why? Well, let's hear from Jonathan Shelley of Steadfast Baptist Church on why he, even though he agrees politically with Marjorie Taylor Greene, would never accept someone like her and would never vote for someone like her to be in a position of leadership. Why are we letting women teach us? Why are we letting women lead us? You know, the Republican Party seems doomed to me because while we're kicking on the Democrats, let's kick on the Republicans for a minute. Most of the recent candidates are women. And I'm thinking like, okay, Joe Biden bad. A woman politician replacing him, not better. You know, you kind of th like people are thinking like, I hope Joe Biden dies, and it's like Kamala. <laughs> you don't even know what the next Pharaoh's like. <laughs> this Pharaoh could be worse. But I'm telling you something: I would never vote for a woman politician. I will not support a woman politician. A oh, major uh, Taylor Green or whatever, Marjorie Taylor Green. She's a conservative. She's on InfoWars. She's a woman. She's not going to fix this country. You know, it's like this, uh, I think the, in Arizona, it's like Carrie Lake or something like that is running for governor. And she's like, she's going to stand strong. And it's like, no, she's a woman. I don't care that she has a short haircut. You know, and it's sick how many men today let women just run our country because they're too cowardly to stand up to silly women. Men are too afraid to stand up to AOC. Men are too afraid to stand up to Hillary Clinton. Men are too afraid to stand up to nasty Pelosi. But I'm telling you, you know what? We need men to stand up and say, get back in the kitchen and make me a sandwich. Amen. And you know what? Some pastors need to tell their wives to do that. Wow. Now, when the camera panned and showed the audience chuckling at his stupidity there, it really disturbed me to see little boys in that crowd because this is being embedded in their heads at such a young age that I worry that they're going to grow up and espouse these same horrific, draconian, antiquated views. But I hope that, you know, when they are old enough, they go to college, they hear from more open-minded people, they do research and realize that all of these lies, all of this dumb fuckery that's being fed to them, that was fed to them at a young age when they're older, was all wrong. I mean, certainly I left the evangelical Christian cult when I was introduced to different opinions, so I hope that the same will be true for them. And, you know, one thing that also bothered me was the women in the audience that just nodded along. I mean, stand up for yourselves. He's telling you that you are meaningless. Your lives aren't as valuable as the lives of men. Your voice isn't as valuable as the lives of men. And your life, your mere existence, is simply to serve men. Get in the kitchen and make us a sandwich. That's what he literally said. And they're just sitting there nodding along. How can you support someone who thinks that you are inferior to them? I don't get how every woman wouldn't just get up and leave. But I mean, this shows the power of brainwashing. It's just truly horrific. Now, you saw what he said about Marjorie Taylor Greene and Carrie Lake. But Marjorie would say, oh, well, this individual is just, he's fringe. And the MAGA movement, the Christian nationalist movement doesn't agree with him. And that may be true for now. The problem is that if you follow Marjorie Taylor Greene's own political ideology to its logical conclusion, that's the trajectory that they're headed in. That's the inevitable conclusion. She supports a movement that will ultimately lead to her demise. You can't be a leader in the Christian nationalist movement, Marjorie Greene, because the Bible says that women should be subservient to men. They are subordinate to men, and therefore you're not as valuable. Why would you support this? Why would you support this type of movement that thinks that you're a second-class citizen? I mean, we don't know why that's the case, but Marjorie Taylor Greene quite literally supports laws that make women second-class citizens, such as abortion bans. And it's just, it's crazy how people, marginalized people, gay conservatives, support this movement that doesn't like them.
Now, Jonathan Shelley makes it seem as if women have already reached parity with men in government, but that's just not true. In the U.S. Senate, women hold just 24 seats, 16 Democrats, 8 Republicans out of 100 seats. And in the House of Representatives, they hold just 122 seats, 90 Democrats, 32 Republicans, meaning that they only comprise 28% of the House of Representatives. And throughout our nation's history, there's been a total of 42 female senators and 335 female House members. So it is not the case that women are dominating politics. They haven't even reached parity. I mean, just because you have some female Republicans emerge as national leaders doesn't necessarily mean that women are dominating men and, dr and drowning out men. It just means that some women have higher visibility than uh, Republicans. You know, perhaps Marjorie Taylor Greene has more uh, of a platform, has more visibility because she's so vicious in representing Jonathan Shelley's fascist movement. But, you know, even if it were the case that Congress was made up of 100% of women, I don't care. What I care about ultimately is the substance, right? I think that parity is important and I would like to see the demographics in society reflected in government, but political scientists distinguish between two types of representation. There's descriptive representation and there is substantive representation. So descriptive representation just means that if there are 50% of women in society, there should be 50% of women in governing bodies. But substantive representation means that you have a proportional amount of people representing a particular group that actually advocates for them. So when it comes to Marjorie Taylor Greene, for example, sure, she is descriptive representation for women, but she is not substantive representation for women because she doesn't actually advocate for most women. She actually advocates against policies that would bolster the freedom of women in this country. So that's a really important distinction to make. But Jonathan Shelley, he cares more about symbolic descriptive representation than the substance. Even if he agrees with Marjorie Taylor Greene on 100% of the issues, well, he can't support her simply because of her identity. She's a woman. I mean, if you thought that identity politics was bad on the left, is this not like the ultimate form of identity politics gone wrong? Now, look, what he said there may shock some of you, but if you follow Jonathan Shelley, then this is not surprising. This is an individual who is a monster, and we've talked about him before, but for those of you who are unfamiliar with his politics, let's get you caught up. So as Alex Bollinger of LGBTQ Nation writes, the Southern Poverty Law Center considers the Steadfast Baptist Church an anti-LGBTQ hate group. It's part of the New Independent Fundamental Baptist Movement, which includes Seven Anderson's Faithful Word Baptist Church. Shelley has declared that gay men are all pedophiles and once celebrated the death of a 75-year-old gay man. Jim Fahey, a member of the Fort Lauderdale gay man's chorus was killed when a driver accidentally drove into the Wilton Manor's pride parade. Quote, and you know, it's great when trucks accidentally go through those, you know, parades, Pastor Shelley said about the tragedy. I think only one person died, so hopefully we can hope for more in the future. Quote, you say, well, that's mean. Yeah, but the Bible says that they're worthy of death. He continued. They say, are you sad when F-slurs die? No, I think it's great. I hope they all die. I would love if every F-slur would die right now. And you say, well, I don't think that's what you really mean. That's exactly what I mean. I really mean it. So that's who Jonathan Shelley of Steadfast Baptist Church is. Yeah, no hate quite like Christian love, right, folks? Now, I'm going to repeat this again because I think it's important. Um, even if you view this individual as an outlier, currently that is true for now. The problem is that if you follow Marjorie Green and Carrie Lake's movement to its logical conclusion, that right there is the trajectory. I think that it's redundant to say that, but I think it's worth emphasizing that point. If you are in a community that is currently marginalized, vulnerable, lacks political representation, and you support these Christo-fascists, if you pledge to be part of the Christian nationalist movement, that's what you ultimately have to look forward to if your worldview comes to fruition if everything you say you want to be passed into law actually gets passed. That's what a Christian theocracy would entail. So if you are a gay man like Dave Rubin, if you are a female like Marjorie Taylor Greene, it is in your best interest. It would behoove you to leave now while you still can. Because even if currently you'd like to see them succeed to own the libs, you're also owning yourself. So don't be stupid Leave this movement and condemn them before it's too late.